All right, I am back with another Destiny 2 video, uh, here to read the most anticipated TWAB in history. Um, that may be an exaggeration, and yet, uh, I don't know, people are going a little crazy with this today, myself included. Um, got, it, got it trending quite a bit, and it is finally here, right on time at 5 o'clock when it normally is. Uh, they've been releasing it a little early. I sure hope my audio is recording, so I'm about to read a very long TWAB that is supposed to be uh, twice as long as the armor one from last week, and uh, I have no idea how long this is going to take. An hour? 40 minutes? Guess we'll find out, so uh, bear with me here as I read and react to this for the first time. All right, this is a Cosmo one. This week at Bungie, we're talking weapons. This is the last thing of the season. I'm going to try and not read anything that is going to be redundant and all right let's just get into weapon tuning uh next week's update is usher ushing <laughs> there's gonna be a lot of typos i don't i don't blame them because this is such a massive document he is ushering in a new season and a big sandbox update to go with it we've already covered ability tuning armor and mod changes now it's time to go over what is changing with weapons here is weapons feature lead chris proctor with a full rundown Chris Proctor. Good day. It's Chris again. I'm not going to do this whole thing in an Australian accent. We've got a lot to talk about for Season 15, including stasis weapons. Yeah. A rework of fusion rifles and several changes intended to make certain weapons more relevant in the new activity with the new artifact mods. Are we going to find out what the new activity is? Okay. Um, let's clarify some terminology. Nope. I'm not going to do that. This is very technical and firing range stuff. Um, so you can learn about spread angles and hit scans, and I'm guessing they are turning fusion rifles into the other type. Uh, okay, this is good. Global. Season 15 introduces legendary stasis weapons, and we've seen some concern about how these are intended to work, particularly in PvP. So here are some details. Stasis power weapons are in the power slot, but all other stasis weapons are in the kinetic slot. Uh, okay. Oh, interesting. Okay, so it's not another energy type in the traditional sense. It's going in the top slot. Okay, this is to avoid overcrowding the energy slot. Yeah, that's a good idea. And so that it's reasonable to use one in match game content. The kinetic slot won't be renamed at this time. Okay, that's a good idea because I was worried about that and that makes a lot of sense. Uh, some people predicted this, so good job. Stasis weapons don't intrinsically do anything different from weapons of other damage types, but they are the only weapons that can roll with stasis perks. Stasis perks! Oh man! We generally intend stasis perks with slowing or freezing effects that have a kill trigger, this being easy enough to trigger in PvE and fun to use but not obnoxious to play against in PvP. Well, that remains to be seen, and here come the TWAB decks. <laughs> yeah, my friend, my friend called. Uh, stasis being kinetic, so good job, Colin. Um, now that we've addressed Quick Draw's permanent plus 100 handling buff, we see more people using the Quick Swap glitch. Oh, here we go. The glitch uses a combination of inputs to animation cancels, allowing near instant weapon switch or swaps. We want the handling set to continue to have value in weapons, and we don't want, for example, aggressive shotguns to lose their, lose their key downside, slow swaps due to an unintentional side effect of the animation system. So you can't Quick Swap anymore. Very high end end game. PvE people are mad about this. I don't really care. Uh, running out of primary ammo. Oh, they this worked. I didn't think they were going to do it. Oh my god. Okay, so um, running out of primary ammo has never been tactically in interesting. Running out of it in hard PvE content um, or in PvP is weird and sometimes frustrating experience that we'd like not to subject anyone to in the future. All primary ammo weapons now have infinite ammo. Okay, so this was why they changed Inertia Override. Inertia Override has been adjusted to account for there being no primary bricks. Drop Mag's downside of reducing reserve ammo is now almost meaningless. I didn't even realize it did that. We work to be plus reload speed minus magazine size. Ugh, minus magazine size. Gross. I mean, Drop Mag sucks anyway, but... Compact arrow shaft upside of increasing reserve ammo likewise. We work to be plus reload plus handling. Sure, whatever. Updated some other perks that refer to reserves in a way that's no longer accurate. See notes in Fighting Lion and Sweet Business in the exotic section below. Ooh, there's an exotic section. Target farming trials weapons is much more efficient in Season 15. We have some cool new perks for players to play uh, to play with that we wanted to put on trials weapons. All trials weapons available in Season 15 now have seven perks in each column. Was five. What? <laughs> Excuse me? Uh, okay. Okay. Um, we will see how that goes. Uh, oh, they mean seven options. Okay, I get it. I was like, I was very confused for a minute. Um, that's cool though, I guess. 
All right. Uh, when max power levels on weapons launch, we reissued several weapons, and we saw how frustrated players were at having to regrind their favorite roles since the perks pools hadn't changed. Based on that, our reissue guidelines from Season 13 onward were to replace most of the perks. Turns out that was an overcorrection, and that certain perks in the original pools had become part of the identity of a weapon. Yes, which is why nothing else outlaw or rampage anymore. Moving forward, the guidelines for reissues will be to remove the least useful 2-3 to three perks and add 2-3 to three newer perks that give the weapon some new options that may result in entirely new top tier roles without removing the old one. Good call, and I hope this ends with bygones coming back. Okay, <laughs> or breach light. We've made some small adjustments to the weapons reissued in the 3.2.1 update to move these in the direction of the new reissue guidelines. And if you're wondering why our community managers are asking everyone's favorite roles, now you know. Great. Uh, added one or two of the original perks in each column for the Luna weapons reissued in 3.2.1. The Electron weapons, since these can be target farmed, we're okay with increasing the size of the perk pools in this case. Added one of the original perks to one or both columns for the Dreaming City weapons reissued. Tiger Spite, Twilight Oath, or By the Return. Since these can't be target farmed yet, ooh, yet, we didn't want to increase the size of the pools by more than one. Okay, yeah, that's a good idea. And well, I'm wondering what what other weapons they've reissued this season, um, because that will likely lead to a lot of really good ones. So I guess we'll find out. Archetypes. Okay, breach grenade launchers are getting nerfed. Are increasing as a pain point in PvP with the shotgun nerf for seeing a small increase in usage. This change aims to reduce the ease of getting big splash damage for priming or cleaning up targets. We'll watch how things change and make further adjustments in a future update if needed. Note that we're fine with how they perform in PvE, so we have compensated there. Uh, great, okay. Reduce blast radius by 0.4 meters, um, which is not a huge drop from 4.5 to 4.1, minimum from 3.8 to 3.4. Okay, reduce splash damage by 20, which reduces total damage from 220 to 200 uh, before spike proximity grenades. Increase damage in PvE by 12%. Um, because of the above splash damage change, this results in a small overall buff to combined damage. None of this affects Brither Horde. While machine gun usage is surprisingly high, we felt they weren't fulfilling their intended role in high difficulty content, ammo efficient ad clear, and secondary single target sustained damage. Increased damage in PvE by 20%. This buff took like two years, seriously? <laughs> okay. Uh, I mean, that's good. I like that. Um, curious to see if the same is true for, uh, what's it called? Why can't I think of it? The, oh, Xenophage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's not listed as being an exception, so maybe that just got even better. Sky Rifles and Hand Cannons uh, have felt weaker than we like in PvE content for quite a while. Increased damage versus Miners by 15%. Okay, so it's all damage versus Miners, not just uh, precision damage, which they kind of hinted at. And that means um, probably like more kind of one-hit kills and or not leaving enemies alive with like under 15% health, which is what happened a lot. Cool. Uh, okay, fusion rifles. Here's the big fusion rifle thing. This is a whole set. Oh my god, okay. <laughs> fusion rifles have benefited indirectly from the mid-season 14 shotgun nerf, but fusion rifle subfamilies weren't as different from each other as we wanted and weren't all useful in a variety of content. So we looked at all of the options we had for diversifying them and ended up with some substantial changes. This isn't intended to be a global buff to fusion rifles, but we expect some of these to be better counters to other weapons than they were previously. Note that we evaluated some other options which are w w worth a bit of discussion. Given the projectile's travel time, we did like the idea of this behavior in Destiny 1, but on investigation, uh, found that there are networking issues with rapid-fire bursts of non-hit-scan projectiles, and they didn't play as well as we wanted them to. We may look at this option again in the future. Okay, so they didn't change that. All right. Burst rate of fire. This uh, would have meant touching design data and audio for every fusion rifle we've ever shipped, well beyond the scope what we wanted for this change, and not that interesting. Fair. Increased uh, PvE damage bonus that all subfamilies have a 15% PvE bonus. Awesome, awesome. I've been looking for that. Uh, previously high impact was 0%. Adaptive was 10%. And precision rapid fire was 12.5%. Okay, so blanket PvE buff. That's great. Um, high, some of the high impacts are going to be really good now. Uh, okay, push subfamilies further apart, adjusting charge time. Shots fired per burst uh, was 7 for all subfamilies, and damage, note that base below means without battery perks, a charge time masterwork, or the adept charge time mod. Are they fixing it so you can actually masterwork your charge time now? Let's hope so. High impacts charge slower will still require, will still strong require more planning to use effectively. Um, increased charge time, shots reduced, okay these are getting nerfed. 
reduce total damage per burst. Um, we found that charging these in the open is super risky, but pre-charging around corners or in safety is very effective. With reduced shots per burst, they are now reliant on stability, so can stack it with uh, a bit more range. Precision and adaptives are close to unchanged. Uh, okay, whatever. Rapid fires fire faster, allowing them to be used reactively against charging enemies or aggressively when pushing forward. Base charge time decreased from... Oh, wait, that was increased. Okay, decreased from 0.5 to 0.46. That's even faster. That's very good. Shots per burst increased from 7 to 9. Increased total damage per burst. Yeah, these were, like, really underwhelming. So, uh, in playtesting, we found these are very effective against shotgun rushers. A combination of them needing to be closer and you having a shorter charge time work well together. And if you have good enough timing, you can fire two bursts with a rapid fire high impact user before before a high impact user finishes charging their first. Holy crap. That's crazy. I feel like high impacts are kind of wrecked, but I guess we'll find out. With the increased shots per burst, they are now more reliant on stability, but with damage, they were less reliant on range. Part of this uh, work required adjusting several fusion rifle perks and one mod. Yeah, okay. Backup plan's implementation was incompatible with the fusion rifle changes, and we felt like the perk could use a rework anyway. We removed plus 100 to charge time stat, adjusted charge time multiplier from multiplier from 0.85 to 0.7, now scales damage by 0.8. Don't really know what that means. Okay. Liquid coils and accelerated coils needed to rework for similar reason. Converted scale uh, charge time damage instead of modifying the charge. Okay, so I, something about like this is like a variable change instead of like a flat change because the flat change didn't work with the new system. Okay, adept charge time mod found pointless and we felt like it would still be balanced against other mods if it didn't reduce damage. Yeah, okay, so change functionality to scale charge time directly instead of changing the uh, charge time stat without adjusting the damage. A note on the charge time masterwork. If fusion rifle's damage is determined by its charge time stat, similar to how most other weapons damage is determined by the rate of fire stat, masterworks can only increase weapon stats for performance reasons, so it's not possible to change how charge time maps onto damage without big changes to how the charge time stat works. Ugh. We investigated doing this by making the masterwork a perk, but this would cause fusion rifles to exceed the perk budget, resulting in bad things happening. Can't have too many perks on a weapon. Uh, with the fusion rifle we work, we feel this masterwork is more viable. It now rarely reduces bolts to kill. Some may not feel like a downgrade in the same way as before. So they, all these changes and they couldn't change that, huh? Um, I mean, maybe it feels better, but God, that's kind of funny. Um, adjusted the fusion rifle stat order so it matches other weapons. Stability and handling are out of order. All right. This is a big change to fusion rifles, including all exotic fusions, so we'll be watching for any major issues. <coughs> Telesto. <coughs> and we'll make tweaks as needed. Teles you know Telesto is absolutely going to break something with, like, 18 paragraphs of fusion rifle changes. I mean, come on. All right, now Anarchy's getting nerfed. Okay, Anarchy has been dominated dominant for years now. Um, we're ignoring... The Sweet grenade launcher artifact mods, of course, being near mandatory for certain raid bosses, combined with double slug shotguns, etc., as well as excelling as a solo weapon for ad clears and some encounters. We like that it's a great choice for hard solo content and trapping enemies spawn stroke points, but we don't want it to remain a part of a dominant tactic for boss damage. Are they going to make it so it can't stick to things? Uh, particularly, we don't want it to be great for boss damage and ad clears in a single encounter. Have I been spelling ad wrong this whole time? I always thought ad was 1D. I guess I've been spelling it wrong this entire time. With this change, we expect it to remain strong without being borderline usable as a primary weapon. Reduce total reserve and magazine ammo from 26 to 16. Okay, that's fine. Uh, reduce damage by 30% versus bosses. Champions are not bosses. Uh, okay, I, I feel like this could be worse. Um, and I feel like you're really still going to see it in like GMs for champions. So I... I Maybe it just won't be as mandatory for raid bosses, although it was really only... I, yeah. Okay. I mean, we'll see how that goes. That doesn't seem... Oh, they are nerfing Xenophage. Okay. <laughs> Xenophage was already top-notch, uh, so we didn't need... So it didn't need to benefit from the global machine gun buff. It does benefit from the damage per bullet buff to machine guns, but now has a slower rate of fire to compensate, resulting in slightly lower damage per second, but higher burst damage and sustained damage, since it's now more ammo efficient. Reduce rate of fire from 120 to 90 RPM sees less of the machine gun PvE damage buff. All right. I mean, whatever. I guess we'll see. That's a pretty big RPM nerf, but... Fighting Lion. Fighting Lion has always been fun, but not dominant in PvE, so we weren't worried about the impact infinite ammo would have there. Yeah, yep, forgot about that. Uh, however, enabling fast, unlimited grenade spamming was too much in PvP based on internal playtests. We've addressed that specific case without significantly impacting its feel in PvE. Fighting line reserve ammo increased from a lot to infinite. Receives the same changes as other breach grenade launchers, 
reduced base reload set to zero, uh, so it has a very slow reload. Um, now increases reload speed to its previous level on uh, damaging multiple enemies with one grenade. We'll be keeping an eye on this, but believe it's in a good place with this change. And note, we're not going to over nerf an exotic within its own with its own subreddit. <laughs> good shout out. Uh, you should be manually reloading Fighting Lion anyway. Yeah, all right, that's fine. Okay, Vex Mythoclasts. The buffs. The buffs are coming. Okay. We are cautious with tuning this one at launch, knowing that shipping a dominant weapon that has incredibly low ownership would break PvP, <laughs> as it did the first time, uh, and aim for balance, but erring on the side of not letting it ship too strong. However, it felt fell short of balance. Ownership is much higher now, and we want to be strong enough to be a desirable reward for Volt Glass. PvE bo bonus... Uh, PvE damage bonus increased by 40%. <laughs> okay. Range stat increased to be near best in class for high impact auto rifles. That's good. Increased stability stat. Rework catalyst to grant stability and damage after a kill. Ah, I gotta go get the catalyst now. Okay. I just didn't bother because I was never using it. Uh, now, right, now I actually have to do that. Increased rate of fire from 360 to 390. Reduced linear fusion mode charge time from 820 to 533. Jeez. Uh, no longer loses overcharge stacks on stow, except when in linear fusion rifle mode. Oof. Those are some big buffs. Big, big, big buffs. Uh, both for PvE and potentially PvE. Um, since this is not like a real fusion rifle, I don't know if it's being affected by that other stuff, but that is a lot of buffs in one exotic. I mean, granted, it was pretty awful, and yet um, that's, that's a lot. All right, well, I'm very curious to see how that's going to go now. Uh, and I definitely want the catalyst, stability and damage after a kill. All right. Merciless. We had to touch this anyway because the fusion rifle changes and figured if we're in there, we might as well make a buff we've been thinking about. Nice. Updated perk to account for fewer shots per burst should build up charge rate at the same um, amount per burst as before. Reduce the damage penalty for increasing charge rate by 40%. Okay, that's good. Yoten. Because of how the charge time stat works and fusion rifle changes, we made a small change to avoid breaking this weapon. In playtesting, it makes almost no difference, but if I didn't mention it, someone would notice. Uh, cough, cough, fallout. Reduce charge time from 0 0.8 to 0 0.78. <laughs> charge is 0 0.04 seconds faster. Slightly reduced damage per shot. Yeah, okay, that's fine. Um, Bastion feels very strong with shotguns being less dominant, so we're preemptively adjusting it in PvP. It's also super low usage in PvE, so we're buffing it there too. I love using Bastion PvE, I just wish it was stronger, so that's good news. Reduce damage by 15%, can now not quite kill a Guardian with one shot in the three shot burst it fires. So you gotta hit him twice. Increase spread angle by 10%, increase PVE damage by 25%, so overall a 10% increase in PVE. Uh, oh, okay, well, all right, I guess we'll see. Uh, and Sweet Business's perk refilling magazine picking up primary no longer works in the world without primary ammo, so it's been adjusted. Now refills magazine on picking up special heavy ammo instead of primary. Well, there is less of that around, so that's kind of a nerf, I think. <laughs> but perks, firing line. We like the idea of this perk, but it was giving a bit too much damage for free. How many weapons even have firing line? It's like barely any. Okay, whatever. Reduced damage bonus to 20% precision damage for all supported weapons archetypes. Uh, we'll roll on some sniper rifles, linear fusion rifles, and machine guns, maybe some other stuff in the future. Okay, so it's coming to more stuff at least. Certain damage perks uh, only affected impact damage on explosive weapons. We've updated these specific perks to also increase destination, detonation damage. Kill Clip, Rampage, Adrenaline Junkie. Okay. We also fixed incorrect rarity on recently shipped weapon perks. Um, they updated weapon VFX on uh, grenade launchers and rocket launchers. Speeds up the process of adding new weapons. Linear fusion and linear... The legendary fusion linear fusion rifles now have distinct damage type charge vfx okay interesting the near future we're devoting a lot of energy to the witch queen expansion there are a ton of things changing in a few weeks a few weeks wait but the season is next week i don't understand okay so we want to see how things shake out before deciding on further tuning we'll be watching season 15 launch closely and are ready to make some small adjustments as needed in the first half of the season the more distant future, but still before the Witch Queen, which is distant future at this rate. Linear fusion rifles and caster frame swords are still not where we want them to be, so expect some tweaks. Uh, yeah, I don't think they buffed linears enough. I think that's what they're saying. Caster frame swords I, cost too much ammo. I don't know what the deal is. 
We're looking at underused or underpowered exotics. Okay, so we're done with exotics. We'll be taking a pass at some of them, including Arbalest, Suros, Cryostesia, Malfeasance, and more. Mal Malfeasance buffs. I love it. Also, I hate everything about Cryostesia. Uh, Suros, interesting. If you have some issues with spamming high rate of fire semiotic weapons as fast as possible, we've got something in the works for you. If you uh, is this like a accessibility change or something? That's what it sounds like. Priming a target and quick, quickly swapping for cleanup is easier than we like, and we're looking at options for building towards faster swap speeds. We've got a step at hitting both of these points coming. Witch Queen and beyond. We've talked previously about wanting legendary weapons to have more of an identity based on their source and expect to ship a new system for uh, for this in or close to the Witch Queen. Um, I don't know what that means. More identity based on their source. Is that like visuals or perks? I don't really get that. Is this like going back to like Gambit weapons having their own style and Crucible weapons having their own style? That would be nice. Okay. In Season 15, we tweaked exotic primary weapons to generate ammo faster through ammo finder mods, and we have another change plan to make them more enticing in hard PvE content. Oh, there's more. Wait, okay. Um, interesting. Okay, so I thought that was the buff, but there's another buff. That's all we've got for weapon changes. We're looking forward to see how this shapes up, Chris. Whew. Okay, oh, we're getting into the things here. Oh, gotta take a breath. All right, guns. Gu All right, how far are we? Like halfway ish. It's got to be more because there's gonna be stuff at the end. I won't read. Guns, guns, guns. We are still holding a lot of the details on season of Redacted close to the chest, including the name, uh, including the new season 15 arsenal. You will start to discover next week. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. We do want to show off some of the other weapons you'll be earning next season. Uh, okay, so that's different. Oh, ritual quest. Next season's ritual quest is a rocket launcher with the explosive light perk. That is the the one from the grenade launcher with Wendigo, yeah, okay. As is the custom, you will receive a new quest to earn this weapon. You collect your Gambit, Crucible, and Vanguard-themed ornaments through additional quests to unlock its look. All right, so it has uh, explosive lights. Is that gonna be good on a rocket launcher? Don't know, maybe. All right, we're adding three weapons as post-game rewards for completing Vanguard Strikes, Gambit, and Crucible matches. These will drop randomly after completing these activities with random rolls. Here's a sneak peek. Um, are these, what are these? I don't know what these are. Is this the the one from uh, the Cosmodrome? I don't remember. I feel like these are like existing ones in the game that they're bringing back, but I don't remember what they're called off the top of my head, so I will find that out later. Oh my God, the Trials weapons, what the hell? We also have plans to uh, freshen up the loot pool with the Prophecy Dungeon. We've seen a lot of feedback to bring forward weapons originally from Trials of the Nine and thought that adding these to the Nine themed dun dungeon was a great fit. Um, these weapons, sorry, I'm getting more text. These weapons have been upgraded with random rolls and certain ones will drop from specific encounters of the Prophecy Dungeon. Okay, they're adding all of these. That's awesome and a big deal. That's very cool. All right, I can finally delete the Sunset ones I have that I was keeping out of pride. Uh, on top of all these weapons, we are updating the Whirlpool with some fresh drops. drops here. Are the new weapons you can expect to start seeing pop up in the wild. Um, let's skate. That's that really tiny Vanguard sidearm. That's a new Monarchy Hake one. These are, this, uh, is that Scathelock? That's the Vice Dead Orbit variant one. And then that's, I think that's from, I said Cosmodrome earlier. I meant, um, EDZ, EDZ. These are EDZ ones, I think. Okay, well, we'll go through these later. No bygones, no breach light, boo, okay. And relief efforts, and okay. Donate money to the Bungie Foundation for disaster relief. Um, there's just another earthquake in Haiti, among other things, and COVID-19, so you guys should definitely donate. That is a cool emblem, I really like that. Okay, so donate there. Guardians of Hope pre-order t-shirts, um, that's the charity thing, that is a cool poster. I like that. And yeah, I don't know about that emblem. The other emblem's better. Bungie Heart stuff. Team Rubicon. I feel bad not reading every bit of the charity things, but the point is definitely donate to the charity things uh, I have in the past uh, and probably will for this one because it is A, good, and B, there's some cool stuff to get. And now we are at the end here. So this is ending a little earlier than I imagined. Um, well, that was really long, but <laughs> in terms of the scroll bar here. Uh, bungee artists. Uh, oh, this is um, like internal bungee art. Okay. Yeah, they did a great job with this. 
like the the vex stuff especially was pretty killer uh okay now we're getting into known issues eh, i think we're kind of past all the important stuff crossplay starting heroes memorial quests is having problems i guess and more oh these are known issues to come oh no this isn't this hasn't happened yet uh okay well we will see when those are resolved but cool art as usual i saw this this one was awesome uh this is for the solstice thing or the solar embrace thing Five more sleeps until the reveal. You're more than welcome to join us for the main party on our channels. So you have a community like watching with. Co-streaming is allowed. I will just live tweet it and then do a video. Um, and then an article. <laughs> been hyping this up, but at the same time, we don't want to overhype. Let's just say that you should expect at least one video and someone talking about Destiny. I've said too much. Listen, we are excited and hope you enjoy what we've been cooking up. See you next Tuesday. Cosmo. Oh, okay. So that was a lot. I would say... Not a ton of su like super surprises. Um, some stuff was predicted, like uh, infinite primary ammo and um, stasis weapons being in the kinetic slot, which I think is a good idea. The nerfs, I don't really have a problem with a lot of them. I think that they're okay. Fusion rifles, I have no idea what to make heads or tails of because it's just it's too hard to tell like what that's actually going to do at this point. Like, there's so many changes you 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 can't really like understand how this is going to work until you have them in your hands. Um, I don't think Anarchy is totally destroyed. I don't think Xenophage is totally destroyed. This Mythiclass buff looks freaking nuts. Uh, I've already liked Merciless a little bit lately just because I think it's fun, uh, so I'm curious to use that. These two don't seem like they're changing that much, and Sweet Business kind of got nerfed. And then for some reason, Firing Line has a thing. So they're keeping like pretty much everything under wraps. They're not showing off any new weapons from next season. I don't think they'll probably show any until they do an actual season trailer, which may not be until August 24th. Um, and then they, they're just kind of showing... Uh, well, they have the, the Ritual one, but the other ones are showing are returning. This is a good idea. Uh, these are cool to come back. This is a lot being added to the pool. Uh, so, yeah, a lot of stuff going on. And um, I don't know. Like, it's not, like, it, the most changes I've ever heard of, but it does seem to be a lot of good changes. And it's hard to kind of pick anything out that seems unwarranted or overdone. Uh, I think there's certainly a lot of exotics that are still left behind that are still... Uh, kind of bad and need some buffs and we only kind of really saw most of the exotic buffs were just like we're changing these fusion rifles because we changed all the fusion rifles and one mg and one grenade launcher like i don't know i guess with the with the exotic armor they went and did a bunch of buffs so everyone's like ah let's try out the new meta and like that's not really how this feels with weapons per se i i, I, I don't know i guess we'll find out um pve and pvp will both be pretty different in terms of how the sandbox goes pvp doesn't sound like it's getting too too much um based on the you know the, the larger changes with stasis and shotguns and stuff kind of already happened so uh, and then i mean further ones are coming um with the, the subclass things but I, a lot of these are kind of pve based so it's like oh will scouts and hand cannons be viable in pve now so it's a little different um i i, I am looking forward to kind of a larger exotic pass on some of the other other ones but Obviously, we're also going to be getting like two or three new exotics probably, so we'll see how it goes. So that is the TWAB, the highly anticipated TWAB. I will uh, say that was a, a pretty good one, pretty beefy. And now in about three hours, I have to talk about this on DCP for two hours, which I will look forward to because it won't just be me talking by myself uh, and Evie looking very confused about everything I'm saying because she doesn't know any of these words. But all right, uh, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys later. Take care.